what is up guys welcome back to another episode on EI Entertainment Studios back at it with another debate episode today's debate episode we're gonna be talking about Godzilla Ultima versus Shin Zilla here's the plan folks we're gonna go over the backstories and analyze these two giant creatures and once we're done with that we're gonna put them up against each other in a death battle so without further ado let's begin with the backstory of Godzilla Ultima. So Godzilla Ultima is the newest incarnation in Singular Point with four forms which goes as follows. Godzilla Aquatilis, Godzilla Amphibia, Godzilla Terrestris, and finally Godzilla Ultima. Obviously we see an inspiration from the film Shin Godzilla by Godzilla having all these forms. And Godzilla was first discovered by people in a submarine before he started his rampage attacking the city. And this film was actually set in a kind of tone where all these kaijus existed, for example Rodan and all these giant um, spider creatures. And I believe they're Kumanga, but they, I don't know, I think they're Kumanga. I don't remember them mentioning their names in the film, but let me know. I think they're Kumanga. Anyways though, let's continue. The height of Godzilla Ultima is 100 meters tall, which is the final form, and he can obviously grow more than that. Abilities, we're gonna do a quick skim. Atomic breath, evolution, withstanding from attacks, archetype discharge, terraforming, and finally, regeneration. Aggression level is high, territorial level is medium. Biome is earth. So let's go back to the abilities and do a deep analysis. So the atomic breath basically is the atomic breath. It's a radioactive pulse that comes out of Godzilla Ultima's mouth, just like any other Godzilla has, and it does a lot of damage. It's hot, it's radioactive, and it just destroys and rips through flesh. After that, we have evolution. Obviously, Godzilla Ultima has many forms as he changes forms depending on where he is and how he needs to change to fit the environment, very similar to Shin Godzilla as well, and uh, it's possible that he may change forms in the upcoming seasons as well. Now, next is withstanding from attacks. Basically, it's a kind of uh, ability where he has endurance and can take damage on a high scale and still be able to fight. So it's a very, very good um, offensive and I would say defensive as well ability because he can withstand himself, therefore he can defend himself and, you know, use the offensive technique as well. Now, going on from that, we have the archetype discharge, which is like a red uh, substance that comes out of him. And it's a very powerful ability because not only does it cloak him inside of it, it basically blinds the opponent because the opponent can't see where he is and he can just do an ambush attack like that just from there, right? So very, very powerful ability in my opinion. Next we have is the terraforming. Now terraforming is quite interesting. With the ability of terraforming, he can actually distort dimensions, create a new interesting plant life, and alter the environment by his behalf. It's very, very powerful. And finally, we have regeneration. He can regenerate his health at quite a quick pace. Okay, folks, that is going to sum up Godzilla Ultima. Let's move on to Shin Zilla. So, Shin Zilla came into existence after the red body fluid of Shin Godzilla fell onto a batch of iguana eggs. The DNA from Shin Godzilla's body fluid seeped into the eggs and affected the DNA to create a hybrid, a new creature known as Shin Zilla. And the abilities quick skim goes as follows Atomic lasers, body super lasers, super run attack, tail whip. Mega Endurance and Adaptation. Territorial level is maximum, aggression is maximum, biome is unlimited, and the height is 112.8 meters tall. Also, um, I will be explaining the biome in the abilities. Because the biome is unlimited, I'll give an explanation to that right now, uh, at the end of the abilities, I should say. So let's begin. 
So first we have the atomic lasers for Shinzilla, which is basically the literal exact same atomic laser from Shin Godzilla, because remember, this is Shin DNA, so it's the same thing just inside of a mutated iguana body now, right? So same atomic laser basically is a purple laser that cuts through every single thing you put in front of it. One of the most powerful atomic breath class of any Godzilla I've seen to date. Okay. Next we have body super lasers. Now, you might recall if you have seen Shin Godzilla that he can actually shoot the same laser from the back of his dorsal plates and from the tip of his tail. Now, this same thing can happen in Shinzilla because of the same DNA. However, it has been altered a bit because of the DNA fusion. And so instead of a giant long laser, it actually shoots in segments. And they are sharp, small segments, and they go fast. It's like a light, like a giant light spaz. And so it actually causes more damage than the original laser, and it just rips through flesh. So that's the body super lasers. Now, next we have the super run attack, and this is a specific ability for Shinzilla. Now, we know he's an iguana, and he's agile, and he's fast, and he has very sharp dorsal plates. So what he does is he runs really fast and kind of like Anguirus, he rolls into a ball and slams into his opponent and stabs them with the dorsal plates. Very powerful technique, the super run attack. Okay, next we have the tail whip. Obviously he has a long tail, sharp tail, and he can whip his opponents. And depending on their state, he can actually, potentially I should say, break the opponent's neck with the tail whip. Very, very powerful ability. Okay, next we have the Mega Endurance. Obviously, he's very agile as I said, so his endurance is very high on both taking damage and just not getting tired. Very high stamina is a better way of saying it, which this ability is. After that we have Adaptation, which explains why the biome is unlimited, because he can evolve and adapt his body, completely evolve his body and change it to fit the environment. Therefore, since he can evolve and adapt, his biome level is unlimited. Okay folks, this is going to sum up both of these two giant kaijus. Let's put them up against each other in the death battle. Now this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do close range and far range. We're going to do far range first, 700 meters apart, meaning there is no physical contact. So both of these kaijus, Shinzilla and Godzilla Ultima, have to be 700 meters apart with absolutely no physical contact. The reason why I, I uh, do this is because it tests the opponents out with limited abilities. And we're trying to see with limited abilities, can they still manage to defend themselves and win a fight? And we're here to find that out right now. So let's start off with Godzilla Ultima. So Atomic Breath is fine with far distances, so that is okay. Evolution has nothing to do with that. Withstanding from attacks, nothing to do with that. Archetype Discharge is fine. Terraforming is fine and Regeneration is fine. So he's actually very rare. Godzilla Ultima is one of the little class of opponents now I was like not the only one but there has been a little few of them that are able to use all their abilities in the format of far range so that's very rare and that's very good so every ability is able to be used okay let's move on to Shinzilla let's see if there's any restrictions here so first we have atomic lasers obviously meant to go far distances so yes body super lasers same thing yes Super run attack, uh-oh, here is something that is going to be restricted. We cannot use that because super run attack uh, needs physical contact, right? He needs to hit the opponent, they're 700 meters apart, so super run attack cannot be used. Tail whip also cannot be used. Mega endurance, nothing to do with that. Adaptation, nothing to do with the distance. So super run attack and tail whip are actually not allowed in this battle now. So from far range, I personally believe that Shinzilla will be the first one to attack because of the aggression being on maximum. He's obviously going to use the atomic laser, and it's not going to cause too much damage to Godzilla Ultima from the beginning. Obviously, if he abuses that uh, ability, it's going to 
it could kill him, but in the beginning it's going to be a warning shot, and it's going to, you know, it's going to rip something here and there, but it's not going to kill the opponent, obviously. And with the atomic laser, obviously Godzilla Ultima from far distance is going to react with the atomic breath. And the atomic breath we know from Godzilla Ultima is also very powerful, including Shinzilla's. They're both very powerful, so they're going to be going back and forth. But since they're very far, they can't come close, there's going to be a game changer here. And now remember, Godzilla Ultima has the archetype, the red gas that we, that we talked about that he can cover in. So when he uses that, that is a big game changer because he's going to be cloaked in that red gas, fume, whatever you want to call it. And what's going to happen is Shinzilla is basically going to be blinded in the way of he can't see where Godzilla Ultima is and what he's doing. And every time Godzilla Ultima shoots the atomic breath, Shinzilla absolutely cannot defend himself because he can't see what he's doing because of the archetype. And because of the archetype, Godzilla Ultima will win in terms of far range. He will kill Shinzilla, rip up his flesh because of the archetype because he's going to be cloaked in there. So 1-0 for Godzilla Ultima. Let's move on to close range now. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Godzilla Ultima is 100 meters, okay? Shinzilla is 112.8, so he's 12.8 meters taller than Godzilla Ultima. And it's not a huge difference, but you know, every meter counts, so he's a little bit a little bit bigger. So in close range, obviously they're going to charge at each other. And when they charge and ram into each other, including the super run attack that Shinzilla has, not only that, but he's bigger. So in a close distance battle, Shinzilla is going to dominate and Shinzilla is going to absolutely destroy Godzilla Ultima in the ramming perspective and throw him to the ground. And we know how the Zilla DNA is. He is quick, he is agile. Combine that with Shin DNA, and you got a recipe for a monstrous disaster. Aggressiveness combined with almost immortality, right? So when he's got Godzilla Ultima on the ground, Shinzilla is going to claw into him, use the super run attack and close distance, and just stab his dorsal plates directly into the flesh of Godzilla Ultima with the tail whip and then just abusing the atomic lasers with the body super lasers as well shooting from every portion of his body and just poking every single flesh and destroying the guts of Godzilla Ultima in this instance and yes Godzilla Ultima can alter the environment and can do all this dimensional thing but that's just for time itself that doesn't affect the current state right it doesn't affect the current state so all of this, uh, Shinzilla will, I believe, win in close range because of this. So it's going to be 1-1, going to overtime now. Now, overtime, we're just going to go pure abilities. We're not going to look at the opponents. We're not going to look how big they are or how good they fight. We're just going to rate them off purely their abilities. So let's begin. Let's, let's do Shinzilla first, and then we'll do Godzilla Ultima. So Shinzilla abilities goes as follows. Atomic lasers, body super lasers. Super Run Attack, Tail Whip, Mega Endurance, and Adaptation. This was Shinzilla. Let's move on to Godzilla Ultima. Atomic Breath, Evolution, Withstanding from Attacks, Archetype Discharge, Terraforming, and Regeneration. Now, not looking at the opponents, and just purely, purely looking at the abilities, I personally like Godzilla Ultima's abilities a little bit more because of the Archetype. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give another point to Godzilla Ultima in overtime, making it 2-1 due to overtime. So there, therefore, Godzilla Ultima is the winner in this debate video. Obviously, this is just my opinion. You can debate me in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great and amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed. Thank you.